Hello. Welcome to Millstuff channel. Today we gonna talk about the Boeing KC-135, American Military Aerial Support. The Boeing KC-135 Stratotanker is an American military aerial refueling aircraft that was developed from the Boeing 367-80 prototype, alongside the Boeing 707 airliner. It is the predominant variant of the C-135 Stratolifter family of transport aircraft. The KC-135 was the U.S. Air Force's first jet-powered refueling tanker and replaced the KC-97 Stratofreighter. The KC-135 was initially tasked with refueling strategic bombers, but it was used extensively in the Vietnam War and later conflicts such as Operation Desert Storm to extend the range and endurance of U.S. tactical fighters and bombers. The KC-135 entered service with the United States Air Force USAF, in 1957. It is one of nine military fixed-wing aircraft with over 60 years of continuous service with its original operator. The KC-135 is supplemented by the larger McDonnell Douglas KC-10 extender. Studies have concluded that many of the aircraft could be flown until 2030, although maintenance costs have greatly increased. The KC-135 is to be partially replaced by the Boeing KC-46 Pegasus. Like its sibling, the commercial Boeing 707 jet airliner, the KC-135 was derived from the Boeing 367-80 jet transport, proof of concept, demonstrator, which was commonly called the Dash 80. The KC-135 is similar in appearance to the 707, but has a narrower fuselage and is shorter than the 707. The KC-135 predates the 707, and is structurally quite different from the civilian airliner. Boeing gave the future KC-135 tanker the initial designation model 717. In 1954 USAF Strategic Air Command SAC, held a competition for a jet-powered aerial refueling tanker. Lockheed's tanker version of the proposed Lockheed L-193 airliner with rear fuselage-mounted engines was declared the winner in 1955. Since Boeing's proposal was already flying, the KC-135 could be delivered two years earlier and Air Force Secretary Harold E. Talbot ordered 250 KC-135 tankers until Lockheed's design could be manufactured. In the end, orders for the Lockheed tanker were dropped rather than supporting two tanker designs. Lockheed never produced its jet airliner, while Boeing would eventually dominate the market with a family of airliners based on the 707. In 1954, the Air Force placed an initial order for 29 KC-135 as the first of an eventual 820 of all variants of the basic C-135 family. The first aircraft flew in August 1956 and the initial production Stratotanker was delivered to Castle Air Force Base, California, in June 1957. The last KC-135 was delivered to the Air Force in 1965. Developed in the early 1950s, the basic airframe is characterized by 35-degree aft swept wings and tail, four underwing mounted engine pods, a horizontal stabilizer mounted on the fuselage near the bottom of the vertical stabilizer with positive dihedral on the two horizontal planes and a high-frequency radio antenna which protrudes forward from the top of the vertical fin or stabilizer. These basic features make it strongly resemble the commercial Boeing 707 and 720 aircraft, although it is actually a different aircraft. Reconnaissance and command post variants of the aircraft, including the RC-135 rivet joint and EC-135 looking glass aircraft were operated by SAC from 1963 through 1992, when they were reassigned to the Air Combat Command ACC. The USAF EC-135 looking glass was subsequently replaced in its role by the US Navy E-6 Mercury aircraft, a new build airframe based on the Boeing 707-320B. All KC-135s were originally equipped with Pratt & Whitney J57P59W turbojet engines, which produced 10,000 lbf 44 kN, of thrust dry, and approximately 13,000 lbf 58 kN, of thrust wet. Wet thrust is achieved through the use of water injection on takeoff, as opposed to wet thrust, when used to describe an afterburning engine. 
670 US gallons, 2500 L of water are injected into the engines over the course of three minutes. The water is injected into the inlet and the diffuser case in front of the combustion case. The water cools the air in the engine to increase its density, it also reduces the turbine gas temperature, which is a primary limitation on many jet engines. This allows the use of more fuel for proper combustion and creates more thrust for short periods of time, similar in concept to war emergency power in a piston-engined aircraft. In the 1980s, the first modification program retrofitted 157 Air Force Reserve AFRES, and Air National Guard ANG, tankers with the Pratt & Whitney TF-33PW102 turbofan engines from 707 airliners retired in the late 1970s and early 1980s. The modified tanker, designated the KC-135E, was 14% more fuel efficient than the KC-135A and could offload 20% more fuel on long-duration flights. Only the KC-135E aircraft were equipped with thrust reversers for aborted takeoffs and shorter landing rollouts. The KC-135E fleet has since either been retrofitted as the R model configuration or placed into long-term storage XJ, as Congress has prevented the Air Force from formally retiring them. The final KC-135E, tail number 56-3630, was delivered by the 101st Air Refueling Wing to the 309th Aerospace Maintenance and Regeneration Group MARG, at Davis Monthan Air Force Base in September 2009. The second modification program retrofitted 500 aircraft with new CFM International CFM-56, military designation, F-108, high-bypass turbofan engines produced by General Electric and Safran. The CFM-56 engine produces approximately 22,500 lbf, 100 kilonewtons of thrust, nearly a 100% increase compared to the original J-57 engine. The modified tanker, designated KC-135R, modified KC-135A or E, or KC-135T, modified KC-135Q, can offload up to 50% more fuel, on a long-duration sortie, is 25% more fuel efficient, and costs 25% less to operate than with the previous engines. It is also significantly quieter than the KC-135A, with noise levels at takeoff reduced from 126 to 99 decibels. The KC-135R's operational range is 60% greater than the KC-135E for comparable fuel offloads, providing a wider range of basing options. Upgrading the remaining KC-135S into KC-135R's is no longer in consideration. This would have cost approximately $3 billion United States dollars, $24 million per aircraft. According to Air Force data, the KC-135 fleet had a total operation and support cost in fiscal year 2001 of about $2.2 billion. The older E-model aircraft averaged total costs of about $4.6 million per aircraft, while the R-models averaged about $3.7 million per aircraft. Those costs include personnel, fuel, maintenance, modifications, and spare parts. In order to expand the KC-135's capabilities and improve its reliability, the aircraft has undergone a number of avionics upgrades. Among these was the Pacer Crag program, Compass, Radar and GPS, which ran from 1999 to 2002 and modified all the aircraft in the inventory to eliminate the navigator position from the flight crew. The fuel management system was also replaced. The program development was done by Rockwell Collins in Iowa and installation was performed by Bay Systems at the Mojave Airport in California. Block 40.6 allows the KC-135 to comply with global air traffic management. The latest block upgrade to the KC-135, the Block 45 program, is online with the first 45 upgraded aircraft delivered by January 2017. Block 45 adds a new glass cockpit digital display, radio altimeter, digital autopilot, digital flight director and computer updates. The original, no longer procurable, analog instruments, including all engine gauges, were replaced. Rockwell Collins again supplied the major avionic modules and the modification work is being done at Tinker AFB.